Hello everyone, my name is Aista Staraite and I'm a heart failure development executive at Global Heart Hub. I'm glad to introduce this first Global Heart Hub Heart Failure Patient Council Best Practices session on the International Heart Failure Patient and Caregiver Charter. In this session, we will hear from five champion patient organization leaders who launched the localized versions of the charter in their country and the advocacy impact it has been achieved so far. With no further ado, I would like to invite Mark Baines, a co-founder of Hot Life Foundation Canada, to introduce the accomplishments of the Canadian Patient and Caregiver Charter. I say thank you so much for that. Uh, we really appreciate the work that you're doing and moving forward to help heart failure patients across the world. Again, thank you and thank you for this opportunity to present. My name is Mark Baines. I'm the co-founder of the Heart Life Foundation here in Canada. I'm a person with lived experience of heart failure and a transplant recipient. And today I'm going to talk to you about the Canadian Heart Life Patient and Caregiver Charter. So just over a brief agenda for today, we're gonna to talk about why we created the charter as a foundation, the launch itself, some national accomplishments that we had, some learnings and, that we took from developing the charter over the last few years, as well as some recommendations for other groups, and then some next steps on what we're doing with the charter. So really, why did we create a charter? This was for a national standard of care for Canadians and their caregivers, their family, people that look after them, for a better standard of care, a consistent standard of care. There are over 750,000 Canadians living with heart failure. If you ask doctors for more recent stats, that number is probably closer to a million with people undiagnosed. There's 100,000 new diagnoses for heart failure in Canada alone. By 2030, heart failure will cost the economy almost $2.8 billion per year in related costs. That's a significant number. And as much as we think in Canada that we have a universal healthcare system, when it comes to cardiovascular disease and heart failure, access to care, medical therapies such as guideline-directed medications, access to heart failure specialists and support, it really varies from province to province and territory to territory. Not everyone gets the same care that they deserve. And that's one of the major reasons why we launched a patient charter to set that standard. The charter was launched on Heart Month in February 2021 and really outlined seven key principles and rights, as we call them, for people living with heart failure and their caregivers. Receipt of an accurate and timely diagnosis of heart failure. A timely diagnosis. I have to emphasize that. Availability of services to support mental health, which is often overlooked when it comes to heart failure or a lot of physical diagnosis. Access to trusted educational resources to support self-management, empathy and compassion from healthcare providers, looking at the entire picture of the person. Access to multidisciplinary care teams, so not just the heart failure specialist. What about a family physician, a pharmacist, nutritionist, cardiac rehab, combining all of those into that model of care. Timely access to the best standards of care and medical therapies currently available, including technology, and opportunities to provide input into research. So nothing about us, without us. And that's the foundation for the charter. The launch was quite successful. We worked with a Canadian-wide government relations and public relations firm to do a campaign around the charter. We had almost 500,000 people reached across the country, which is significant. We had over 580% increase visits to our website. The charter itself in the first few months garnered almost 15, over 1,500 downloads, which is amazing and over a million impressions on our ads, our placements, and our outreach through the media, which I think is a phenomenal part for a, a local charity doing a national launch. So that was a quite a successful launch in February for the first quarter there. And we've had a few national accomplishments over the last few years since we launched the charter. And in a sense, these are helping to develop strategy for heart failure across the country. And one of the first ones is working with this national heart failure strategy, which was led by Heart and Stroke. So in 2021, they brought together 
key partners in the country, industry partners, brought together system developers, Canadian Heart Failure Society, Canadian Cardiovascular Society, and patients and caregivers to develop this national strategy around heart failure. As I previously alluded to, we don't have this consistent care. So they said, how do we develop a consistent strategy for all Canadians? And the charter principles set the foundation for the action plan pillars when we think about specialized heart failure care across the country, support and information so that trusted education and mental health, evidence-based care, so being involved in research, coordinated and seamless transitions so that multidisciplinary team, an integrated and coordinated health system. So really bringing all parties together to create this coordinated approach, all underpinned by patient priorities from the charter. And I thought that was phenomenal. The second one, and this is more recent, this was launched last year. This is the Canadian Heart Function Alliance. The Canadian Heart Function Alliance, I'm actually the co-lead investigator for this. It's the first time where we've had a national research network with a patient partner as a co-lead. We have 190 participants, which includes 150 researchers, 40 patient partners. We received 27 million in funding, both cash and in kind. This network, which has four national teams, two collaborative projects, seven cross-cutting themes, multiple projects, is underpinned by every single priority in the charter. So we do not develop any research unless it meets these patient priorities that are listed in the charter. I think that is a huge accomplishment for the work that we've done and a testament to the need for consistent and a national standard of care. And there's more to come on that over the years as we develop the research projects. A few other ones that we've had are through industry. So industry is starting to utilize our patient charter along with our journey map for training for new staff that come into the cardiovascular and heart failure space so they have a better understanding of the experience and the expectation of care for Canadians. It's being utilized in health systems. So Cardiac Services BC, which is my home province, they set the strategy for heart failure in British Columbia. And they use the charter as a guide to set their priorities for the years to come. And then through advocacy, we use it as part of our training for our members across the country so they can advocate regionally for better support and resources. And there's also a few awards and recognition, not why we do it, but it's a real testament to the work that we've done. We received the Dr. Harold Siegel Award for contributions to cardiovascular health in Canada, first time a nonprofit received that. The Queen's Jubilee Award for support for community service. And uh, last year, uh, now it's 2023, the Effective Voice of the Year Award from the World Heart Federation for the work we did with the Charter, which is a phenomenal accomplishment. And I think if I think about it globally, and you know, I credit Global Heart Hub, I say, Neil, for the work you've done with this. Our Charter has now been endorsed, I think it's actually 40 global advocacy groups across the world with this international charter that we developed, translated into 17 languages across four continents, and now has the ability to impact the almost 64 million people living with heart failure. And really that's, I think, a massive accomplishment. And there's a lot of learnings and recommendations as we get through. There's a need for this national standard of care in Canada, there's a coordinated approach. We need that. We want to set the stage for multiple initiatives. So this charter, when we look at the key principles such as education, led to Heart Life Academy. When we, the mental health support led to the My Heart Life app and other support groups. So the charter alone didn't have to be a standstill document. It can be used to develop these resources to really help improve self-management, engagement, and empowerment of people living with heart failure. We also learned that we can't do this alone. As an organization, yes, we can create this document, but we need multi-stakeholder support, whether that's our healthcare professionals, our industry partners, our policymakers, to help push these initiatives to the next level to really implement policy change. And there's always a need to do more. So as an organization, we have partnered with the Institute of Health Economics all of last year to prepare an economic policy document ultimately taking the qualitative items, the rights in the charter, and quantifying them. So these recommendations are being translated into policy change, looking at key priority areas similar to our national strategy to improve care at a national, provincial, and regional level. And over the next few months, we'll be working with a government public relations firm to develop and implement this action plan to support policy change across the country. So there's more to come on that front. 
Here's a little resource page that you can download the Canadian Patient and Caregiver Charter. And just remember that together we can create a better expectation for people living with heart failure and their caregivers because it's always about life and not failure. Thank you so much. And Global Heart Hub, I say thank you again for the opportunity to present. Have a great rest of the day. Thank you, Mark. As a creator of Canadian Patient and Caregiver Charter, we as community really are inspired with the success since the launch of this document. And our next speaker is Dr. Marilyn Preston, a chair of Heart Failure Patient Foundation in the United States of America. Marilyn will introduce the achievements since the launching the American Patient and Caregiver Charter. Well, thank you, Isis, for that wonderful introduction. Uh, it truly is a great privilege and honor to have this opportunity to share uh, with everyone about our rollout of the Heart Failure Patient and Caregiver Charter. The uh, Heart Failure Patient Foundation, uh, located in the United States, uh, provides educational material uh, to patients and caregivers um, across the United States. Uh, a primary goal of the foundation is to really increase that direct patient and caregiver information and opportunities to engage. At the beginning uh, of the development of the heart failure patient uh, and caregiver charter, uh, we worked collaboratively uh, to ensure that the information really uh, reflected uh, the patient's view and provides insight in what a patient's responsibilities are as well as uh, what the patient should anticipate um, their care to be uh, throughout their journey. Uh, once the charter was completed and vetted uh, through um, numerous uh, reviews, uh, the Heart Failure Patient Foundation unanimously voted and approved this patient uh, charter. Uh, and ultimately, uh, it was announced uh, at the annual meeting of the American Association of Heart Failure Nurses. Um, this annual meeting initially uh, in June of 2022 was held in Orlando, Florida, uh, and it was presented to all those uh, in attendance. It was subsequently presented this past June uh, at the annual meeting again, uh, which was held in Boston. Following the initial uh, announcement and dissemination at the annual meeting, a printable PDF copy was then sent to all members of the American Association of Heart Failure Nurses. It was subsequently placed on the foundations together in Heart Failure website, which is a website uh, for patients and caregivers, and the link is listed uh, below. This is uh, a reflection of the link of Together in Heart Failure. And on that website, uh, there is opportunity for those that join uh, to engage uh, with others, um, also experiencing uh, heart failure, as well as have an opportunity to view and print, download, and have access to all the educational materials. The materials are designed not only uh, for patients, but also caregivers, uh, and are uh, vetted uh, through expert review. Again, it uh, was very exciting to have this opportunity to work collaboratively um, and internationally and uh, to develop this charter that is currently uh, being disseminated and used. Thank you very much. And if you have an opportunity, please uh, go to our Heart Failure Patient uh, Foundation website that is listed here. On that website is a link to the Together in Heart Failure website, or you can go to Together in Heart Failure uh, directly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marilyn. Glad to see the great success and collaboration with Global Heart Up. Our next speaker is Fernanda Cavallo, Director of Institutional and International Relations from Instituto Lado Lado Pela Vida in Brazil, who will introduce the achievements of patient and caregiver charter in Brazil. Thank you very much, ICT and Global Heart Hub 
for inviting us to share our strategy, activities, and results related to the launch of Brazilian version of the Heart Failure Patients and Caregivers Charter. We are very much grateful for all support during the process with the translation of the document and also for encourage us to do a good job for our patients and caregivers community. So uh, now the first question is why does Brazil need a heart failure patient charter? First of all, because Brazil has more than 200 million people and 150 million uh, use public health system, the SUS, the name of our public health system. And at least 2 million patients have heart failure. And 240,000 new diagnoses per year. And it is the number one cause of hospitalization in Brazil. So we have very disparity in socioeconomic we issues to spread heart failure information for vulnerable population, mainly in the rural areas, thus to the low internet and also the source of information. Uh, low income is also a limitation for these people to reach the public health systems. And also because Brazilian population have very low health literacy, and this is a challenging for understanding medical terminology and treatment instructions. Also, there is a lack of uh, awareness and recognition of heart failure symptoms. And also the, the healthcare professionals at primary care, at SUS, they have difficult to identify the disease and also for referring patients to treatment, initiation, and also monitoring. So we decided to design a strategy, including different touch points with patients and caregivers. We used social media, PR, and marketing, email marketing. So, and also we had the, a detail that were, uh, have a, a partnership attracting some uh, endorsements from clinicians organizations like Brazilian Cardiology Society and also the Brazilian uh, Heart Failure Network and it was very very good. Also um, from now from PR activities you can see this is only a sample we had more than 250 thousand people reached by the PR articles. It was a very good result. Also, uh, for the launch, we, we schedule a webinar with the two cardiologists I mentioned before, the presidents of the heart failure department of Brazilian Cardiology Society and the Brazilian Network of uh, Heart Failure. And, and during this, this uh, webinar we scheduled that in september last year 2022 because it's the month we have the very important campaign that is follow your heart so uh, we have more than 1700 people connected and watching the the online presentation this webinar um, we also send the PDF file with the charter for the cardiologists from our scientific committee and also some messages via WhatsApp for our, all the patients that we have in our mailing list. Uh, also, you can see we have a very good result of this event and uh, more than 700 uh, people connected and also the post event we reached more than 6000 people in with our messaging because it, it's in youtube in facebook and they can reach it until today so uh, also we we did something in uh, linkedin and all platforms from our social media uh, these are some examples that we reached. We did some um, 
actions in Instagram using the stories and also the, the feed. And uh, we reached more than 1,200 people with more than 1,000 impressions that it was uh, quite good. Also uh, in Facebook, we did some seven posts and you can see that uh, the numbers were good. And uh, even we have many, many people without internet access, but uh, this strategy was good. So we also send email marketing because we have um, more than 31,000 people in our mailing list, not only patients and caregivers, or heart failure, but a lot of people from uh, Brazilian population. And we sent more than 30,000 emails and it was uh, delivered. And also almost 10% was open. That is a, a good number of uh, return. Also, we use our website because now this is a new phase of our website, but last year we did uh, a carousel in the website front page and it was there, but we, it is included in our uh, line that is publications for be downloaded. Also, we have a very good uh, accomplishment. It's a national accomplishment accomplishment we were invited to participate in the heart in a heart cafe during the world congress of cardiology organized by the world heart federation in brazil last year in october in rio de janeiro and also for the brazilian cardiology society we during this heart cafe we told them about the launch of this uh, charter and also we showed the, the booklet for, for them. And also Lado Lado was invited for the Department of Heart Failure for participate in a, in a congress that is gonna happen in uh, now this year in 2023, in August the 10th, in a panel dedicated to heart failure in primary health care in SUS. And it's going to be a also very, very important uh, achievement. Uh, we have some positive and negative learnings, very little negative. But the, the first positive one was the global visibility for Brazil activities related to heart failure, mainly in Lado a Lado Pela Vida organization that it's an affiliate of Global Heart Hub. Also, the opportunity to be in contact with medical societies, telling them what we are doing for the patients. And also the opportunity to spread messages to the media, to the press. And only one negative side of this, uh, this work is because the, the, the charter is only an online version. We couldn't print it a lot of, uh, booklets to send for the vulnerable population without internet access, but maybe we can have something and to do a, a partnership with some and print some, some copies and send for, for them. Um, so this is uh, our experience and our uh, testimony about the, the launch of our Brazilian version of the heart failure patient and caregiver charters. Thank you very much again. Thank you, Fernanda. That was a great presentation and a great success. The next speaker is Tanya Hall, the CEO of Hearts for Heart in Australia. Tanya will introduce the achievements of the patient and caregiver charter launch in Australia. Look, thank you, ASD, for inviting me to speak about um, the patient charter best practices today. Um, I'm Tanya Hall. I'm the CEO and founder of Hearts for Heart. Um, we're a national charity that supports, educates and advocates for Australians and New Zealanders living with heart disease. So um, at Hearts for Heart, we bring together patients and healthcare professionals with a shared goal of reducing the burden to heart patients. And we achieve this through support, information, education, awareness events, and advocacy. 
So I'm here again to talk to you today about the patient charter and why it was needed in Australia. Um, in Australia, heart failure affects uh, half a million Australians and claims the lives of 61,000 Australians every year. It's the number one cause of hospitalisation for those over the age of 65 and one in three patients are admitted to hospital with heart failure um, are readmitted within 60 to 90 days. So it's a really serious condition that requires long-term management and if diagnosed early, um, appropriate, appropriate treatment and lifestyle changes, patients can live with heart failure um, and live normal and, and uh, ha happy, healthy life. So I wanted to give you a little bit of background um, again about the patient charter, the, um, you know, our aims and the, the, patient, uh, uh, the patient caregiver heart failure charter really aims to re reduce um, heart failure hospitalizations, improve patient outcomes and really address the unmet needs of patients across the across the care. Um, the, patient, the patient caregiver charter uh, advocates for patient-centered care to ensure patients and caregivers and their health care providers are aligned across key decision making um, across all areas of, of, of their health care. The charter calls upon patients carers, caregivers, healthcare providers and community advocates to know and recognise heart failure symptoms and be confident to act appropriately. So look, Hearts for Heart took the Global Heart Hub Patient Charter with the view to Australianise so that it was appropriate for the Australian um, healthcare system. Obviously, while we um, as you know, heart failure patients may share similar um, experiences, sometimes the, obviously the healthcare system is, is, is slightly different and, and also in terms of the language that we use. And so what we did was we formed clinical and patient review committees so they could be involved in that review process. Um, and we also received endorsement from the clinical groups because that's really important to here in Australia. And so what we decided was that we launched the patient charter during Heart Failure Awareness Week and we embarked on a social media and, um, and national earned media campaign. So we basically took those resources once again from Global Heart Hub and we um, and we sort of updated them again so that that was appropriate for the Australian market. Um, but we had a really huge outcome. Like we were really so it was one of the best in, in campaigns that we've ever run actually, um, which resulted in uh, in terms of mainstream TV. Um, we were on all of the four major mainstream TV channels. Um, and when we say here that the, the, the uh, TV stories was 106 indications, that means that it was shared across Australia um, 106 times. We had a, um, 66 radio stories. We had um, 17 online print stories. Um, we had uh, healthcare, that, so the main, the key sort of uh, healthcare media um, platforms. We had eight stories across those and more than 2 million vi uh, viewers, which is a huge, huge result. Uh, in terms of the, the social media, we, we put paid advertising behind that and that reached um, 85,000 people. So, um, and again, the coverage extended to seniors, uh, senior media, um, as well as regional and indigenous um, focused media stories too. And obviously the prevalence um, increases as you get older, but in particular uh, in Australia, our indigenous population. So I just really wanted to share just a snapshot of some of the, you can see here, um, so, you know, some of the uh, TV news uh, uh, articles that we, that we received and, and obviously the print media too. So I suppose in terms of the learnings, um, the media campaign was highly successful um, and generated a lot of interest a, a, a across all of the different media platforms. And we really found that, uh, I suppose the reason for that was obviously it was the first Heart Failure Awareness Week. Um, we had a, you know, a wonderful document to, to, sh to share. So there was something really newsworthy. Um, we had really compelling statistics, a clear call to action. Um, and obviously with the two na nation first, as I said, with Heart Failure Awareness Week and with the Patient Charter. In addition to that, we had a personal why um, and uh, I, my own, I lost my own father to heart failure at the age of 59. So media really connected with that story. Um, and I suppose that again, that's where I think, um, you know, we certainly find here in Australia, it's really important to have 
the, the clinician who is is available to speak to media, but also to have a really powerful patient case study. Um, and, and with Australia, we have, you know, it's a really big country. We have, um, you know, lots of states. And so we make sure that we have a clinician and a, and a case, patient case study in each of the states who are willing to, to speak um, clinicians from the clinical perspective, but patients in terms of sharing their story. Um, and in terms of the paid promotional um, aspects of things, so the paid advertising behind the social media, we obviously targeted key groups. So that was also really, really crucial. Um, and the other thing I think is it's really important to keep the momentum going. You know, obviously we launched this document through Heart Failure Awareness Week and um, and it was great to, to, to gain traction that way. But also it's it's important to continue sharing that message all year round. So, you know, we do that through, you know, utilising the social media content. We do that by connecting with our partners, um, have them sharing the document through, um, you know, when they're visiting GPs or when they're um, visiting uh, hospitals or, you know, or, or clinics. Um, so we really try and get it out, push it out there as much as we can. And in addition to that, even um, sharing it through the clinical group. So we have the governing bodies like Cardiac Society of Australia and New Zealand where all the cardiologists and, and nurses are a part of. So we share it through those, those platforms too. And so I guess um, in terms of recommendations, I think, you know, like many ch charities across the globe, like ours, we're small, we're limited with resources. And I think Global Heart Hub really provide a unique opportunity for us to utilise their resources. So we're not you know, starting from scratch. Um, and and really, uh, there's been so much work that's put into it that really does provide value across the globe for all patients. Um, and I think, you know, certainly by utilising these resources, you know, um, again, we're able to, uh, you know, it helps, it saves money, um, enables us to really build upon uh, the resources that we already have that we probably wouldn't ordinarily be able to develop. So, you know, there's certainly... Um, yeah, so many um, you know, positives with working with Global Heart Hub. And the thing that I personally found really helpful was that when we did face any barriers, um, it was really easy to be able to connect with the Global Heart Hub team and they were really flexible because obviously we sometimes run into challenges in our own countries in terms of, you know, approvals and so forth. Um, but they were always really flexible with um us being able to amend it to you know um, so that we were, it was applicable for us here in Australia um, and I think the other thing to, to really remember is that you know patients have or patient organizations have a unique opportunity to bring key stakeholders together to to, to, to bring a unified voice to certain issues you know and and I think um, you know it's something that industry can't do it's something that the clinical groups can't do alone but you know we have the capacity to do that and we've certainly been you know, successful in terms of advocacy and, you know, patient access to therapies and, you know, important awareness campaigns like this and sharing these materials, um, you know, we, we we wouldn't be able to do this alone um, and we, we uh, you know, we find that, you know, just being in this position that we're able to really achieve great things. So I guess that um, really brings me to the end of my presentation and, you know, thank you again for having me. If you, any of you have any questions or if there's anything we can do to support you, please don't hesitate to reach out to me anytime. Um, my details are here, obviously, on the screen. Um, so thank you once again and all the very best. Thank you, Tanya. Great success to see um, happening in Australia at this moment. And the last but not least, myself, as the president of Lithuanian Heart Failure Association, I would like to introduce the achievements of Lithuanian Patient and Caregiver Charter, which was launched last year in September 29. So the biggest issue currently um, in Lithuania is access to healthcare. And uh, in cardiology, the issue is extremely sensitive due to long waits to see the general practitioner and then to be referred to the cardiologist. In some cases, GPs do not see um, the issue to refer the patient to cardiologist or do not see the reason to do so. The patients most of the time be queued up for the waiting list up to three months, sometimes up to six months to see a specialist. 
the patient and caregiver charter it was really needed in Lithuania to address the major issues. That is, that cardiovascular disease is the number one by death in Lithuania and number one by hospitalizations. So within the organization and the activities, we saw the need to localize the patient and caregiver charter and introduce it to the stakeholders in Lithuania and along together to the patients. The highlights of this um, patient and caregiver charter is that this is actually the first ever document created for the patients, which represents patients' expectations and responsibilities. We actually gained a special recognition from the stakeholders and policymakers of being the first document and needing a change within the community. The document, as I mentioned, was launched uh, in September last year during the World Heart Day. We launched uh, with a social media campaign uh, for our patients and we actually um, launched it with a roundtable stakeholder discussion um, as well uh, during the September 29. So roundtable discussion um, and with social media launch, we actually um, managed to gain the organic reach of 3,000. And nearly in the first few days, we sent out around 100 copies uh, to the patients and the caregivers. The round table uh, was a great success. We gathered first ever stakeholder roundtable meeting in Lithuania with key opinion leaders such as head of a uh, healthcare department unit at Ministry of Health. We had a president of Lithuanian Cardiac Society. We had assistant director of National Health Insurance Fund at Ministry of Health. We had a council of prime minister at government of Lithuanian Republic and a moderator who is a health journalist who supported this moderated discussion with the stakeholders. During the discussion, the main goals were to highlight the burden of heart failure in Lithuania, to hear how the funds were distributed to support patient diagnosis and treatments in heart failure specifically, and to improve the current issue of long waiting list and delayed diagnosis, and the cost behind the hospitalizations and difficult treatment options for end-stage heart failure patients. I would say the goals were uh, really achieved successfully and the outcomes uh, after our roundtable discussion with the stakeholders came to overall very positive feedback from the stakeholders as mentioned previously stakeholder roundtable uh, round table video has been shared on stakeholder social media channels within their own initiative organic video views on facebook reached to 1500 uh, this meeting as well has strengthened the relationship with stakeholders, which was very important for Lithuanian Heart Failure Association. And the trust has been built, uh, the representation uh, for the Lithuanian Heart Failure Association and the work that we do. The biggest achievement during this discussion with the stakeholders and the clinical society cardiology was that the, during the stakeholder roundtable discussion, when the heart failure issues were presented and the burden of heart failure, the Ministry of Health had confirmed to include the anti-proBMP testing for free that is paid from the state fund for all the patients in the primary care. This has been uh, established since the 1st of January and we're already seeing uh, patients being diagnosed with NT-proBMP in primary care, anyone who is uh, short of breath. And that is for two uh, cases. One, to identify if the patient has heart failure or not. And if there are results showing that there should be a, or could be a suspicion of heart failure, how quickly they, they need to reach the cardiologist. The main learnings and recommendations I can suggest for the patient organizations are the organization uh, positive name and reputation is very important. 
this will impact the engagement with the stakeholders. And that what I see through my experience of building and working along together with uh, different industry partners and different stakeholders, inviting them to the different meetings, exchanging the information, and etc. I would say be brave and persistent. Sometimes it's very easy uh, if you don't get the required res response from the stakeholders, but that does not mean that your work is not successful. So soft and respectful appro approach is really um, worked out really well for me. I received the positive confirmation of participation for Roundtable within the first 24 hours of sending out the invitations. That is just shows how quickly the information um, goes around and then, you know, we can move forward in terms of planning steps for such uh, events like roundtables. I would suggest inviting the stakeholders into patient organization events. This will definitely strengthen the, the relationship and they can potentially see the work that the patient organization is developing within the country and the activities they get in involved. And for example, our experience currently when we have this great testing within heart failure established um, in our community in Lithuania, we see that um, when such a change happens, such as diagnostic tool, um, it is quite difficult to approach and um, for primary care to really understand and define sometimes the guidelines, how they need to be tested, the patients. So sometimes we still hear from the patients that uh, the guidelines for testing are not followed by the primary care. And we see the lack uh, in training, a good training for the primary care for our general practitioners. There is some misinformation as well where we have the information about what it, what the testing is available for who and in which cases, but people interpret sometimes uh, the testing in their own way. And uh, some misinformation is always circling around. So it is very important for patient organization as well in collaboration with clinical societies to, to step in and run the informative, the, the good quality information to the society through the social media or through the newsletters. And one of the important things as well, which I'm sure was mentioned by the previous uh, speakers, are that uh, always to try and budget at least a small amount on social media for paid advertisement, because there is a big dif a difference in reach and engagement and visibility. And especially now knowing that, for example, Facebook channels, they do not really advertise if there's no put spend behind. So at least if it's a small amount, I would really recommend that. That will increase your visibility in all the activities that you do. Thank you very much. There are the contacts of the organization. I would like to thank everyone for watching the session. I really hope it was beneficial to hear from the patient organization leaders and learn how they implemented Global Heart Hub International Heart Failure Patient and Caregiver Charter in their national countries. Let's continue implementing change in heart failure and improving the patient outcomes globally. If you have any questions about the charter and local, looking to localize it, please reach out to me uh, on the email which is provided at the end of the session. Thank you.